Welcome to Daily Scripture Reading. I do not own the rights to this music. Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 15 and ending at verse 29. This is the Amplified Version. Intent of the Law Brothers and sisters, I speak in terms of human relations, even though a last will and testament is just a human covenant. Yet when it has been signed and made legally binding, no one sets it aside or adds to it, modifying it in some way. Now the promises in the covenants were decreed to Abraham and to his seed. God does not say, and to seeds, descendants, heirs, as if referring to many persons, but as to one, and to your seed, who is none other than Christ. This is what I mean, the law which came into existence 430 years later, after the covenant concerning the coming Messiah, does not and cannot invalidate the covenant previously established by God, so as to abolish the promise. For if the inheritance of what was promised is based on observing the law, as these false teachers claim, it is no longer based on a promise. However, God granted it to Abraham as a gift by virtue of his promise. Why then the law? What was, it, what was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to people their guilt because of transgressions. That is, to make people conscious of the sinfulness of sin. And the law was ordained through angels and delivered to Israel by the hand of a mediator. Moses, the mediator between God and Israel, to be in effect until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. Now the mediator or go-between in a transaction is not needed for just one party, whereas God is only one and was the only one giving the promise to Abraham. But the law was a contract between two, God and Israel. Its validity depended on both. Is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a system of law had been given which could impart life, then righteousness, right standing with God, would actually have been based on law. But the scripture has imprisoned everyone, everything, the entire world under sin, so that the inheritance, the blessing of salvation, which was promised through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe in him and acknowledge him as God's precious son. Now before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, perpetually imprisoned in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed, with the result that the law has become our tutor and our disciplinarian, to guide us to Christ so that we may be justified, that is, declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty, and placed in right standing with God by faith. But now that faith is come, we are no longer under the control and authority of a tutor and disciplinarian. For you who are born again have been reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, sanctified, and are all children of God, set apart for his purpose, with full rights and privileges through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ, into a spiritual union with the Christ, the anointed, have clothed yourselves with Christ. That is, you have taken on his characteristics and values. There is now no distinction in regard to salvation, neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you who believe are all one in Christ Jesus. No one can claim a spiritual superiority. And if you belong to Christ, if you are in him, then you are Abraham's descendants and spiritual heirs according to God's promise. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.